Hello everyone, my name is Shimmer Glow and welcome to a new video. With the new year coming up, I wanted to remake my gacha model using the new Gacha Life 2 base. And so, instead of just uploading it on YouTube Shorts, I was thinking and decided to use this opportunity to finally make more in-depth tutorials. So that's what I'll be doing. I've gotten so many comments of people asking for full length tutorials on my YouTube Shorts and I promised you all that I would. So this video is the first in a series of tutorials teaching you how to make a Gacha Life 2D model. This first video will cover how to make the PSD model using Ibis Paint, but you can use any other drawing platform as long as you can save as a PSD and you have layers. I'll explain that in a bit more detail later on. Another thing I wanted to mention is that the way I make my models is that I use custom clothes and custom hair, so that requires me to have some more additional steps. However, if you're using Gacha for everything, it's slightly different than what I do, but you can still use the same process. But as I said earlier, I'll explain that later. So enough with the intro, let's get on with making the model. Now, as I said, I'll be using Ibis Paint X to make my model, but you can use whatever app as long as you can export in PSD and you have the ability to have lots of layers. If you're not familiar with what PSD means, it's basically a format that saves your file or your art with all of your layers. PSD stands for Photoshop document, however, just because it says Photoshop does not mean you have to use Photoshop to be able to make your model. There are many other drawing apps that allow you to export your file in PSD format. If you're unsure your drawing app exports in PSD, you can always just Google it. Another thing you have to make sure is that your drawing app has the ability to handle lots of layers. Making a Life 2D model requires you to separate almost every little thing, so you need to have a drawing app that's going to be able to handle more than 50 layers. With that said, if you have your drawing app and you made sure it can export in PSD and has the ability to handle lots of layers, then we can start making our model. I'm a very lazy person, so instead of making the base model every time I make a character, I decided to just make one and separate the line art and the base color so that whenever I make a new model, I can just import my base and recolor to fit the character I'm doing. So we're going to start with that. I open a new canvas and choose the 4K resolution, which is 2160 by 3840 pixels. For me, this is a good canvas size as it is not too big that my tablet breaks, but not too small that it looks pixelated. You can either use the same size or experiment to find out what works best for you. After I have my canvas, I import a picture of a blank gacha model. As you can see, this one has no hair and no clothes, and at the moment, only one pair of eyes. Gacha Life 2 has the ability to make the character transparent, so that's what I did. I put the skin and liner transparent, which allows me to see everything separated. This saves time of removing body parts, taking screenshot of it, importing it to your drawing app, and that whole mess that we had to do for Gacha Life and Gacha Club. So now that I imported the blank base, I started tracing it with a grayish color. Then I colored it with a light gray and even added the shadow later on a different layer. I do this with all of the body parts. I later also imported some different hand shapes. There are two ways of doing mouths. You can either import the actual mouth shapes on your model, or you can do the inside of the mouth and have the top lip and the bottom lip separated so that you can rig it in Life 2D later. I prefer doing the second one because it just looks a lot better. I'll explain why you need to separate it like this when we go to rig the model. The important thing is, is that you need to have the inside of the mouth, the top teeth, the bottom teeth, the side teeth, the tongue, the top lip line and the top lip skin, the bottom lip line and the bottom lip skin separated. And if you have any makeup on your model, like lipstick, that too needs to be separated. So with the mouth now handled, I imported some different eyes. I didn't import all of the gacha eyes, just the one I use most. If you use other different ones, then you can import those. You don't need to import the same ones I use. Same thing goes with the hands. For separating the eyes, the sclera, the top eyelash, the side lash, and the bottom eyelash have to be separated. For the iris, for now, we're just going to make a circle for it. And later on, when we go to make the actual character, we'll shade the eyes and separate it. Like I said before, I am very lazy, so we're just going to copy paste and deform the eyes a bit. Then I do the same thing with all of the other eyes. If it has an eyelid, then I make sure to separate that, as well as any other makeup like eyeshadow. You can also add different expressions, but I'm not going to do that. 
With the eyes done, we have our very own Gacha Life 2 base model. You can also adjust it a bit so you have a male figure. And there we go! We have two base models that are going to save so much time. Before anyone asks, no, I won't be sharing the link to this model specifically, as I'm already showing you how to make your own. So be original and make your own version of it. Now it's time for the fun part, making the actual character. After saving the base model as a PSD on IBIS, I upload it to Google Drive and from Google Drive, I open it in IBIS again. Then we have our base model on a new canvas. With this canvas, you're going to start making your own character. Because we kept the liner, the base color, and the shadow on different layers, it's so much easier to just recolor the model with the actual skin color of your character. You can recolor the model by simply alpha locking your layer and using the color that you want to paint over it. Kind of like using Clipping Mask, except Clipping Mask makes a whole new layer. We don't need any more layers. <laughs> With Alpha Lock, you are just recoloring what's on that same layer. It's a little bit difficult to explain, so hopefully the demonstration helps a little. Next, we are going to make the eyes. You can just import a picture of the iris and trace over it, but if you want, you can shade the eyes yourself. A lot of people love the bouncy eyes effect I do in Live 2D, which I will teach you how to do later on when rigging. Same thing with the mouth though, I'll explain the reasons for separation when we go to rig the eyes. So for now, make sure to have the eye base which looks a little bit like this. Then the pupil and any other highlights you may have that you want them to have a bouncy effect separated. Then once again, if you're lazy, just copy and paste the other eye and deform it a little bit. Make sure you keep everything in the left eye and everything in the right eye separated though as it can get complicated if you have both of them in the same layers. Now, if you have your gacha character already made using the gacha life outfits and hair, then you can just import a picture of your character and trace the outfit and hair, making sure to keep things separated. And that would be it. But if you're familiar with my channel, I love making custom clothes and hair, so that's what I'm gonna do. I started with the hair. I knew I wanted something similar to my old model. I especially had to find a way to include the braid in every hairstyle I tried as it has some significance to the character's lore. So I decided to stick with somewhat of the same hairstyle as before, but instead of making the braid to the side, I made the braid kind of like a crown. Once I had the sketch done, I began doing line art. For separating the hair, it all depends on each character's hair, but I usually separate the bangs into different pieces, usually 2-3 to three to get smoother movement. The side bangs both left and right. The ponytail depends on how fluffy it is, all separated into different big strands. And the same goes if the hair is loose. But then again, you can separate it however you see fit. This is just my way of doing it. After line art, I colored the hair and later on I shaded it and added highlights just for some fun. Then the hair was done. Next, I recolored the body and began working on the clothes. I went to Pinterest for inspiration and made a board filled with stuff that I think fit the aesthetic and the vibe of the character. I especially loved this outfit, but I wanted the top to be different, so I found this other top that I liked. For the shoes, I knew I wanted some knee-high boots, so I found a reference that I thought was good. With the outfit now in my mind, I began sketching it on the model. Once I was happy with the sketch, I apparently went back and added highlights and shadow to the hair, but never mind that. I went to do liner for the clothes, making sure to keep things separated. Then coloring everything with the color palette I had on my mind. I added the pattern on the skirt, then shaded the clothes. Lastly, I added the gloves to all of the other different hands. Made the earrings, which I almost forgot. Then the model was done! I duplicated the file on Ibis Paint and merged all of the layers needed. Like for example, you don't need to have the liner and coloring separated for everything unless you want to lose your mind with Life2D. You can merge the skin layers and the clothes layer. If you want, you can also merge the clothes with the skin. But I like giving my characters different outfits and hair, so I'll keep them separated and later on in Life 2D, rig it so that I can change it. It's kind of like giving my character its own wardrobe and hairstyles. Once it's merged however you want, you save it as a PSD and upload it to your Google Drive. Then, you're all set to rig your model! I hope that this tutorial was helpful for you to get started on making your own Live 2D model. The rest of the rigging process will be split into different in-depth tutorials that will be coming out over the course of the next few months. 
So if you want to see the rest of the rigging process, make sure to subscribe and hit the bell icon to get notified every time I upload a video. If you have any questions, you can comment on this video and I'll try my best to answer. With that being said, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I'll see you all next time. Bye bye!